on now, and a relationship breakup is hard enough when children are involved. But imagine if one parent fled overseas without a trace and took the kids with them. My son has been stolen. People's children have been stolen. Nothing is happening. It's been two years since Daniel Wass last held his son. Sean was just 14 months old when his Japanese mother fled overseas and took him with her. She gave Daniel no warning and no forwarding address. One minute they're there and the next minute they've vanished off the face of the earth. Yuka Wheatley left the country during family court parenting proceedings. Daniel believes his former partner is hiding their son in her hometown in Japan. These are the Christmas presents and cards for birthdays. Um, and things that we've sent over that have been returned to sender. Like Daniel, Aussie authorities haven't been able to find Yuka or Sean. So for the last year, he's contacted his son in the only way he knows how, through video diaries posted on YouTube. It's been over a year and a half now since we last saw you. And I've registered you on the missing persons list with the Department of Foreign Affairs. Mate, we miss you. We love you. There are 365 in total, one for each day of the year. Daniel's desperate for his son to know him and his Aussie family. That shows Sean who his family is in Australia, the sorts of things that we do, um, naturally the sorts of things that he would be doing with us. Uh, so hopefully one day he can find us and um, we can, he knows that we love him and that we miss him. Daniel's situation isn't unique. Two to three children a week are removed from Australia and held in another country by one of their parents. Our government can get involved if the other country is part of an international agreement known as the Hague Convention. A parent abducts a child wrongfully or retains a child in a country after a holiday, then our Australian government will make a request to that signatory government to seek the return of the child. But not in Daniel's case. Unlike Australia and around 80 other countries, Japan has not signed up to the Hague Convention on International Child Abduction, which means any custody decisions made here aren't recognised over there. It's for this reason Japan has become known as a safe haven for parents who abduct their children. Matthew Wyman's world turned upside down three years ago. He claims his Japanese wife went home for a holiday with their two sons and never came back. I slept on the sofa for two and a half years and I still had the calendar up from 2009. I had the toys all around. I had my son's school bag and hat hanging from the chair, uh, ready to start school the next week. And uh, of course, yeah, it's, it's very difficult. Matt's one of the luckier ones. He knows where his kids are. He travels to Japan when he can, but says the distance and limited access he's given to his children when he's there has taken an emotional and financial toll. Uh, foreigners don't stand a chance. Uh, the Japanese legal system or the Japanese courts always award custody to the Japanese parents. Uh, visitation is basically non-existent. Unlike Australia, there's no concept of shared parental responsibility in the Japanese legal system. Basically speaking, Japan is a black hole for international child abduction, and once the child enters Japan, it is never returned. Matthew has been hounding the Australian government to do more to help parents left behind. I'd like to, to see that the Australian government uh, berate countries that uh, support or sanction international child abduction and I'd also like to see the Australian government start making some noises about maybe possible trade sanctions against countries that, uh, that participate and sanction international child abduction with, with our allies. Our government is planning to close some of the loopholes in its own laws, including making it illegal to wrongfully keep a child overseas. Japan has also indicated its intention to sign the Hague Convention. The problem is, it will be of little or no help to parents like Matthew and Daniel because it won't be retrospective. But neither are willing to give up hope. I've got to be honest, I've kind of accepted the fact that they're not, they're not coming home in the immediate future. Uh, hopefully when they get a bit older they can come back to Australia maybe for high school or for university uh, when they're old enough to make up their own decision. What I'd hope that they would do is at least make contact with us at least let us re-establish our relationships so that we can grow together 
certainly a tough situation. We did try and contact both of the women involved, but they couldn't be reached for comment. If you want more info on that story as well, all the details on our website. It's just heartbreaking seeing that those 365 videos you put up for every one. I, as a parent, I can't think of anything worse than having your, your kids removed. It's just mm. devastating. It's the problem with any of those international conventions. If, if someone doesn't sign it, the country doesn't sign it, the thing falls over. There's a haven. And that's what's yeah. Yeah. And uh, guys, now it's time for the weather. Sydney siders will endure a wet and miserable week, except for umbrella.